talk about something that a lot of people talk about but don't know a lot about, feng shui. And I have brought here with us Therese, Ch you do it. Chachinska. <laughs> Chachinska. I love it. Um, you are a feng shui consultant and you have your own company. It's called? Feng Shui Balance. Feng Shui Balance. And I'd like you to educate us all on feng shui. Well, feng shui literally means wind water because we are trying to balance those extremes in our lives. In modern society, it's about setting up our environments so that they best suit our needs, whether it's at work to be productive, kind of Good. stirring up the wind and the energy, or whether it's at home where we're trying to relax and kind of rejuvenate. That's where we want more peace. So it's about having the right balance in both, both spaces, also in communities. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we can actually do environments that where um, common meeting places, shopping malls, hospitals, where people congregate and interact, it actually influences the way that we interact, whether it's positive or negative. Oh, cool. So we really look at the energy flow in a space, mm -hmm. whether it's helping us or hindering us. So in order to help us, it would increase our health. If it's not, then we tend to feel really exhausted. As women, we tend to be overextended, so it's about kind of holding on to that energy and using it to our best advantage. Okay, so I've heard a lot of feng shui about the way you place things within a home and an office. Could you go into more about that? Yeah, we really like to work with the walls, the windows, the architecture first. We don't often get that opportunity. Usually we buy places that are already yeah. built or we take a job and we don't get to choose whether it's no. going to be at a home cottage. <laughs> Can I or... see the, the furniture layout here before I get hired? Right. Well, that's why we go back to the furniture layout and the colors that we use because we can influence those more easily than we can where the walls are, where yeah. our front door is. So depending on what we're doing, let's say a workplace, the modern cu cubicle, we have our back to the yeah. end to the cubicle. Nobody feels empowered that way. The executives always have their, their back to a wall or to the view. Uh -huh. They have their, their person facing the entrance. You can see opportunities coming in that way. Oh, cool. So that's yeah. the way we might actually apply it in a workspace. Um, at home, where's your bed? Where are you looking when you first wake up? Are you looking at a cluttered closet? Uh -huh. That's going to influence the where way should that it we be? feel. Where should it be? It should be facing the window? A window is something that's positive, a view, a solid wall, so you feel protected. And I've heard you, you have to put it in the center of the room or not against a wall. Tell me more about how, like, where the bed is supposed to be, because I sleep. <laughs> well, yeah, we all want to sleep and be rested in the morning. We also want to be sure that we have opportunity coming to our bed in a sense Ooh. that if we're in a couple, we don't want the bed up against a wall okay, where yeah. both partners can't actually access the bed. Everything in feng shui matters. Okay. Every placement, um, it's a reflection of who we are and what we want out of life. So if we have our bed crammed into a corner, are we really inviting our relationship to succeed? Okay. So we want equal access on both sides. That's a really simple way of looking at it. So feng shui has esoteric parts about it, mystical parts about it, and very, very practical, yeah. sensible things. So it's a mixture of both of Makes those. Makes sense. Who wants to be in a corner? <laughs> right. You go to the bathroom to crawl, crawl all over the person. <laughs> right. So you want it to be easily accessible, and that means that you both have a safe place to exist in that relationship. Very cool. Now, you mentioned something earlier to me in private about architecture, Ooh. like <laughs> um, about how they uh, place buildings, like facing certain ways. Like, where's the door supposed to face, the front door? Like, east, west, north, south? Well, there's different types of feng shui. It's as vast as there are diets in America. Okay. Um, it depends on what it is that you're looking for. There's compass feng shui, which is what you just mentioned, uh -huh. which is based on northeast, south, and west directions. Qi flow feng shui, which is what I do, and qi means life force energy. Okay, cool. That's about really looking at the space that we're putting the environment and determining it based on the space and the needs of the space. Um, a retailer is going to need a, a storefront that's right on the street, yeah. whereas somebody who does, a therapist, let's say, can afford to be on the third floor mm -hmm. back set away from the street. So in that regard, it depends on what we actually need the space to provide. If I get an opportunity to have a blank slate, such as an open lot, yeah. I'm going to look at where are the streets, where is the best access to a home or an office based on what's already in existence. And if there's something such as uh, a hillside nearby, I don't want to face the hillside. I'd rather have that behind me for protection. Yeah, protection, yeah. So you can have a good view, so you can see opportunities and know if you really want to welcome them in. Fabulous. Well, let, tell me about your website if you want to learn more, because I already have so many questions and yeah. we're running out of time. Well, um, I mentioned that, that feng shui literally means wind water. Yeah. So the name of my website is www.windwaterbalance.com. Oh, windwater.com. 
I love it. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I want to rearrange my home right now. <laughs> I'll help you. Let's thank go. You. All right. <laughs>